Hi everyone. So let's talk now about how to visualize tree data using different tables using D3. So I like creating trees out of tables because that way you can, you can create a tree that is a dynamic tree using, for instance, a column. In this case, for instance, this object type. When you don't have that many um, instances of that, it actually makes sense. For instance, just to say like how many are from individual and then like this organization and property and unknown or, or, or street, I think there is a small one in there. So these data, by the way, are all the 311 calls uh, from the city of Berkeley uh, from a data set that you can find in open data uh, in a Socrata server. So I'm actually going to copy this URL. And then the whole idea of what we want to build is that take something like this and then group by certain things and then start creating different trees out of that. So that's what we are going to be doing on this video. So let's start by creating a new notebook in here. So, and then say that this is going to be our D3 three visualizations or the three visualizations or whatever and then the key way of creating these d3 three, three visualizations is that you need to get some tree data and then you pass that tree data through a layout algorithm and that is going to get you a laid out data okay so uh, and then when you start looking at this and let's start by by loading the data so let's put the, the data here in the url Let's start um, downloading or importing D3 rather. So we are going to be using D3 version six. And then uh, if you want to see the data, like the basic one of seeing this will be just like, this is a CSV file. So you can just use D3 CSV. Remember that in Observable, this is returning a promise, but Observable is actually waiting for that promise to resolve. And then you get this data. You want to see how that data looks like. My favorite way of doing that, of course, is using Navio. That is my widget for visualizing table data. And then um, I like it because not only you can use it for getting a, an idea of how the data look like, but also for selecting elements. So I can do just this. And then uh, I guess I, I didn't save it in here. So let's say that this is going to be my data. And then when I do that, I immediately get a, a view of that. That shows me all the columns, and I can also select certain things or sort by elements and select others. And then in here in selected, I'm going to get those selections, okay? So as you can see, this is a table data. And then the problem is that when you start creating these visualizations, and as I said in here, you need some tree data. So actually we need an extra step, like we can say that I need to go from table data into tree data. So let's call this uh, table data, table data, and let's say here selected table, okay, just for having names that refer to that. So why do I need to do this conversion first? Well, if you take a look at the D3 hierarchy package, that is the one that we are going to be using for creating these visualizations, uh, it's going to show you that most of the things that you're doing here and pretty much all the examples that you find on my bus to from this, usually use the flare data set, they are going to be coming with a format like this, that it's like a, um, an object that contains some names and then children that are going to be like the children of that first root node, which on, on itself are going to be also having elements like this, okay? <coughs> so we need first to convert our things into that. So the obvious way of doing that will be to actually group by certain things. Like for instance, we can choose to group by object type. So Let's do that and actually that give us like an extra step that will be like from this you go to the grouped data and then from the group data to the tree data and from the tree data to the layout data. And let's try to see the differences in between those. So in here we want a grouped. So group data it's going to be D3 group and then of our selected table. And then uh, from there I'm going to be grouping by D dot uh, object type object uh, type so when you do that then you can see that we don't have that many object types so we have like these five that are the ones that you can find in here as well and then that's a nice way of grouping like all the calls by by that element if you want to see a little bit more than a thousand you can pass in here a parameter because if this is a socrata server it says limit equals let's say like for instance ten thousand so uh, still now it still handles that and then you now get higher numbers in here 
So once you have the group data, so basically we went from a table to like a map in this case that contains keys to a list of elements. And then you can pass that and get the tree data using the tree hierarchy. So the key with the tree hierarchy is that usually it will expect a file. And I didn't know that I will, it will expect a file like this. And then it will take that hierarchy and it will append certain very useful methods like get me the descendants of this node or, or, or this tree or the leaves only of this tree or, or allows you to do traversals of the trees. Actually, uh, uh, if you check for fields, observable example on D3 hierarchy, you're going to find a really good examples of that. So, uh, but what we have right now is a group data. So the one thing that I didn't know is that you can actually, at least in D3 version six, you can pass um, directly the output of D3 group into this one, because since this is a nested, like even if I go another level, like let's say that I wanna use also the request, request category. Then when you do that, then you actually have some sort of nested object and then D3 um, the hierarchy is still, it's able to do that. So that's a very nice addition. I don't know if that one existed before, I, I just didn't know. So the beauty of this is that when you have these three data, then you can start performing operations. As I was saying, like for instance, you can say, uh, give me only the leave nodes out of this. And then you get like uh, 10,000, which uh, kind of makes sense because like the way we are adding up all of this, it's like creating all of these, uh, is these groupings. So that gives me another uh, problem. And is that if I were to create a visualization like this, it will create not only the tree, but then 10,000 rows in there. So I don't really want that. I only want to go like individual and then stop at this moment. I want this to be my lift. So instead of doing group, maybe what I should be doing is roll up. And then with roll up, the difference is that instead of grouping all of the individual elements, it's going to roll up things and count by something or, or, or do some calculation. In this case, what I'm going to say is that take the vector of elements that are grouped in there and then just roll them up and give me the number. So when you do that, now I have that this is my last, my leaf node. And then you see here the leaves, it only has 56. So that's my manageable. That's something that I can visualize. And then I can use that attribute for in my actual visualization for, for, for doing something. So having done this, then you can see now that the tree data, it's, it has these nice uh, elements. Each one of the nodes has a parent. So that's, we are going to be using that later as well. And then also you're going to have this weird formatting where you have like the, either the map or when you are on the children, you're going to have uh, the uh, elements from uh, going, for instance, in this one. Then you're going to be going from the object to the number of elements that we have. That's going to be important. So having that, we now can go into uh, the layout data. And for a layout, you need to choose what is the layout that you're going to be using. So like the most basic one that you can use or the one that, that it seems like a good starting is D3.3. So D3.3 expects the output of a D3 hierarchy. So it's going to be using all of the uh, uh, functions and extra information that D3 hierarchy is adding. So then you can pass that in here. And then, uh, actually not in here, I'm totally wrong. So this is layout or like, let's say, um, let's call this a tree or how should we call it? So it's, it's uh, different enough. So let's say lay tree. <coughs> and then this is going to be a function and that function you can call it on your actual data. In this case, like tree data, something like that. So to keep this short, you can just pass this directly here. And then uh, that, or let's leave it like this because it's going to be useful for me later. So once you do that, this is the layout data. And when you look at this, the key of this is that it actually gives you an X and Y coordinate that is the one that you can use for visualizing. And if you keep on going inside, it's going to give you values for each one of the children. And, and that's what you need. So you actually need one to put a circle in that specific position. If you notice that these values, you're going to see that they are all between zero and one because this uh, function uh, gets a lot of parameters. And one of those is, for instance, from where to where do you want to visualize it? So for instance, you can say in here, that I want this to be a uh, size width and height. And let's add a height in here, uh, like it could be here. 
let's say this is 500 or something like that so um so basically uh when you do that now my layout data uh, that it should be let's collapse this one this is the tree data and then uh this is the laid out laid out uh tree data so basically this one in here uh, now has values like for instance you can see that it plays the x position in right in the middle of the of the chart so now we can start drawing this and if you are going to be uh, drawing this with vega light or something like that you can stop watching now and then go and watch the video for vega light or, or even you can even do that on on on, on tableau and i'm not sure if i'm going to go venture in that way but let's say we want to draw this one so in here in 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 d3 so in here what you can do is that you just create an svg and then you say i'm going to create an svg and inside that so we are going to start with a dendrogram so or a tidy tree so what we want in there is to take my svg and then to select all so i'm going to search for all the nodes and then i'm using classes in there as you can see i'm going to do data binding with these data not with the table or the tree or 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 the original data because otherwise you are not going to get access to these values then i'm going to join in this case with circles and then inside there i am going to put like let's say an attribute class and this attribute class is going to be a node because as you can see i'm selecting by node then you can use either x or uh, x and y in this case it's a circle cx and zy to, to place the nodes but i'm actually going to play it safe uh, because I'm, i might reuse that later and then i'm going to do a transform that it's another way of moving things in svg with a translate so when you do that now i know that i can access d dot x and d dot y although as you can see observable is telling me i don't know what d is and it's because this must be a function accessor and then finally i just need to say this is going to have a radius and let's say like maybe around five points or something like that it's not drawing anything because this cell is not draw returning anything so we can take the svg selection and uh, get the node and then drawing that directly in there and as you can see everything is working um, so we have the circle we have the radius we have the class and we have the data so probably i'm having an issue in here but let's see oh yes so actually if i go and i say that i need a view box that is going to be from zero zero to width comma height and hopefully there we go so now that i do that then it actually shows me the the notes in there i can do a little trick and it's adding a little margin so this is going to be a very simple margin uh, that i'm going to apply the same everywhere just because i'm lazy and then uh, uh, one way of applying that margin is that i'm going to say that my view box is not going to start in zero zero width but uh, it's going to start on the margin so let's say that i'm going to start in minus the margin so it's starting in minus 20 and then it's going to go with a width of uh, uh, of a width of the width plus margin times two so by doing that i'm going to put margins everywhere so now i can see the nodes in there so this is the first uh, node uh, if you want to also draw of course we want to draw uh, the links then you can do that with a very convenient function and by the way one of the things that is happening in here and we're going to see that in a minute is that and let's do that before doing this one is that this is going to be also like this laid out is also a tree like with all the functions so you can see that if i do this for instance it doesn't draw the notes in the inner notes anymore so i can this i can choose which ones i want to uh, uh, draw so most of the examples that mike has is using descendants but it seems that for this version it actually like when you iterate over that it gives you the descendants which is quite nice so now i want to draw the links so when i'm going to draw the links there is a very convenient function that it's called links and when you do that actually let's take a look at what this looks like it's going to have 61 and it's one from source to target and then each one of those in this case it's another element that has an x and a y so uh, that it's like showing like the source and target nodes so in this case this is not going to be a node it's going to be a link and then um, 
I need to add a path and then let's say this is going to be a link I'm not going to be doing a transform and actually mostly what you want to do in here is just change the attribute D and uh, because remember it's a path and then there is a very convenient function that I think it's called link and then you have all of these options so this is a vertical um, um, a vertical layout and then you have to provide accessors for X in this case it's just going to be D dot uh, X and accessors for Y so my Y accessor is going to be D dot Y so just by doing that then you have this nice thing actually that looks really cool uh, but the way it's looking like that is because it's using a fill, a uh, black, black, black fill. And then we can say, let's say that the stroke of this is going to be like a gray value. Let's say like maybe ZZZ. And like that sounds like CCC in Spanish. Like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Don't you get it? No? Okay. Spanish anyhow so so basically what I'm going to do here is like maybe don't draw the notes as black but that's great so now you have like a little bit better colors like let's say maybe oh and this one should be fill so I, I thought that wasn't looking that great so now you have this visualization it's our first one if you also want to show the values then you can do that as well and the only thing you need to do is like replicate this thing uh, actually if you want to do it in here inside here like you can say instead of showing this circle I'm going to add a grouping and then inside here I'm going to do a call and remember this is very convenient and I just learned this recently that allows me to nest this and still get the same grouping that this will return and then inside that grouping I'm going to append uh, first a circle and then inside that one I'm going to apply these two things okay and then uh, I'm also going to append inside that same grouping I'm going to append a text and text doesn't have an attribute R it should have uh, the X and Y it's already set up in here so that's good um, but then let's say that I'm going to change the text and if I want to get the text this is where it gets a little weird I want to do it with d.data sub zero and the reason why I want to use d.data sub zero is that when you look at the laid out data remember that you have like not the links but uh, here the laid out data uh, you can see that each one of those has this data element that contains the actual tree so in this case or the data that came from that node so in this case individual and when you get to the level of the nodes it actually will be uh, the name and the number of elements that it has for that so now we have this it's showing me all of the different elements let's say that I'm going to apply um, style that will apply for everyone actually I could have changed the uh, uh, the colors in there as well but anyhow so let's do the style and then say any SVG text is going to be a font size of eight points and then a font family of sans serif uh, for some reason uh, times doesn't look very good in there so at least uh, using a like a serif font doesn't look that good in there so at least it has this and if you want to move the nodes a little bit to the right it's just a matter of passing like an attribute in here but since I want to show order layouts so let's say that I want to let's let, like for instance like the text is not really readable in there so if you want to show not vertical but horizontal so if you want to show this in horizontal then the way of doing that it's instead of using a different function you just flip things in here so you can just say the links are going to flip um, you change the order in here as well and uh, then you also change the link for not being uh, vertical but horizontal and then you cannot see them all because of the view box that we are using so you can change this like this and then you will get a very big one uh, because it's trying to fill all the screen so we can say that this one is going to have a width of width and then when you do that uh, in this case I guess a width of height maybe because we are flipping things so now this is a little bit more manageable and more more readable okay so and that seems about right so now we have like horizontal and vertical let's see now what happens if you want to create like for instance a trim up so the way of doing a trim up is like let me first copy this so and let's put it in here let's put an, something in here that let us see that these are trim up 
or like this is containment and then basically for containment you need a new layout so base before we had like the previous layout we had was and i went a little fast through that but it's because we have to cover too many of these this is the layout that we have so i had something that was laying out things as a tree but if you look in the tree hierarchy you have a lot of other layouts like for instance these ones in here so you have the tree tree map and the beauty of it is that it has a very similar syntax so let me go back to where i were and sorry for all the scrolling so i'm here in containment and so i'm going to create a new one so this is going to be layout tree map and then well, i think ben likes it like this so i'm going to say this is going to be a tree map and then having that one what i can do is that i can say laid out uh laid out um tree map data it's going to be taking my layout of the tree my layer like my layout algorithm that is this one and passing that to my tree data that i think is this one and i'm going to make a copy so it doesn't show with the data that it also the other one added so as you can see in here it's not adding x and y now it has x0 and y0 and the reason for that is because uh, uh, this is going to be supposed to be done with areas so right now you don't need one coordinate you need two of those so if i change for instance this one and then i say i'm going to use layout data and then use x0 although this one doesn't make sense because this is like trim up doesn't have links but let's change this data in here as well and then lay out things like this so this is going to be my starting point and then of course i broke everything uh so i wonder what i'm going what i'm doing in here let's get rid of this because although well, let's comment that out because it will be nice to see that in there so i have this element and then i'm translating everything and then oh yes not the the width and height seems to be okay so and and this is going to be another of the things is that in a tree map you only draw the leaves so but i don't think that might be the problem so everything is going oh yes 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 so the tree map but it has a size so it's not that so let me see what it's drawing in here and what position she's getting excuse me so um so as you can see all the translations are getting an error on the y axis so i do have a dy0 and i have the x0 dy and then let's see the laid out data i have a y0 uh what about these ones oh yes so i i think i think i know what is the problem now. as you see here actually many of those have like these nand values so it makes sense because like you actually need to um to pass uh, in the tree map layout you need to pass a value attribute that tells uh, uh, the tree map how to size things. So, and I didn't have that in there. So what I'm going to do now is that, remember this one, that was the one that we were using for creating the hierarchy. That is this one in here. I think I am going to, I think I can do that in here. So let's add this one in here. And then I need a different name. So tree map data, maybe. So well, let's say tree data aggregated. So if you look at this one, then we have our group data. This doesn't have a value, but then you can pass a sum parameter to the tree hierarchy. And the idea is that in here, you tell it, how do you want to sum up things up? So remember that we have this data. And when you get to the children, when you get to all the way down to the children, then you can see that in the second parameter of that data is where you have your value. So you can show that like this. You can say, my value, I want it to be d.1. And then with that, it should get a little bit better. Now we have this element. So that one, it's, it's adding up. And then I'm just going to pass, instead of passing this one, I'm going to pass that one. And now it looks way better. So now I want to see how the links will look on something like this. Actually, you want, oh, that's interesting. So it's only, Linking from this one. Um, oh yes, because the link is, is ending everything. So it, 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 that's very interesting. I never did a, a link like that. So anyhow, so in a tree map, you don't need links. So let's get rid of this one. And then we have the leaves. 
And in a tree map, you shouldn't be actually drawing things with circles. You should be drawing things with rectangles. And then uh, you don't need a radius. What you need is an attribute uh, width. And this width, it's like if you think about it, like if you see the data that we have from the layout algorithm, that is this one, laid out tree map data. Uh, you have x0, x1. So if you want the, the width, then what you do is that you say d dot x1 minus d dot x0. And then for the height, you do the same thing in here. And this is going to be y1 minus y0. And then doing that, now we just start and see, you, you can start seeing the, the tree map. Uh, the tree map also has some other parameters, like for instance, you can say that if you want it to be round. So I think what that does is that it uses values that are not like, maybe it's not as accurate, maybe, I'm not sure, uh, but at least it will look a little bit more squarified. And you can also change the algorithm that you use for that. And another attribute that is very useful for this, especially since we don't have colors yet, is adding some padding. So now it helps me seeing a little bit about like the elements in here, okay? So for the tree map, I will need a color uh, scale. So let's create that. So this could be like a square ordinal, and then you need to decide what skin you are going to use. So in this case, let's say skin category 10. I'm not going to pass the domain, so I'm just going to let it uh, figure them out. And then in here, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to use color of the, and remember, we are only drawing the, the leaves. And luckily, since we only have two levels, then we can use the parent parent name, which in this case is going to be parent data sub zero, uh, for drawing the color. And then you have nice coloring like this. However, like another option you can use is that if you want to identify the things inside, then you can actually use the color by the element that it's inside. So I don't know if that makes any sense. So something like this. So actually that tells you that this one is this same one in here, and this one uh, is that same one in there, but you get a lot of repetition because you only have 10 colors in there. So a nice trick that I have seen my poster using recently, in, and there is a beautiful um, notebook that we're going to see later on how to use colors with D3, uh, that you can quantize um, a sequential scale that actually has multiple hues, like interpolate spectral. So for that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pass a range and then I'm going to quantize. And what this does is that it takes uh, my D3, interpolate, um, and let's say you can interpolate any of them, but like for instance, cube helix also has multiple. I haven't tried that one, but let's see if it works. And then of course it doesn't. So let's try the one I have tried that it's a spectral. I wonder if cube helix requires a parameter. And then it gives you parameter numbers like or, or, or colors. And then in here, you get how many you want. So if we want to see how many colors we need, like we can compute that by saying, like taking the original data and then uh, how is that data called? Uh, table data, it's, I think it's a. And then we let we can map and say, get me all of the, I think it's called, uh, what is the name of that thing? Um, request request category, I think is what we are using for the inner level. And that's what I want to color by. Uh, so request category. And then that gives me like 10,000 of those. I can create a new set out of this. And that gives me 14. And if I actually want the actual number, then I think I can do this. Uh, this one, maybe, there we go. So with that, I can put that in here. And that's going to tell me like how many categories I have in there. So with that, then it actually shows you that it has very labeling. Uh, for why it seems like important to actually for the text to move the text at least a little bit um, uh, down so it gets inside. And then um, it's kind of like acceptable. Although you have these horrible examples in here. If you take a look at the original example from Mike Boston, it has a very way better technique that it's actually using clipping that is going to cut things in, in that specific element. If you want to see the number in there as well, there is two ways of doing that. Like one, it's doing what I did in here. And then you can actually take another one inside this and then say that I'm going to take the text and I'm going to append a T-span. 
and then the beauty of the t-span is that it's like a subdivision of the text and then I can say that this one it's going to be something like this I am also going to say that it should start on x sub 0 and finally I'm going to duplicate this so I can add another t-span in this case for data sub 1 and then uh, this should be on y um, let me put this here and wonder if this will work so I want to move the whole text 10 and then I want to move this one 0 and I'm not sure if this is going to work and this order I'm hoping it will be relevant relative it's not so I wonder if I can do this and this if that doesn't work yeah that worked so now you can see the number in there Mike also did a trick that I really like when he was doing this interpolator and is that instead of passing directly the interpolator he passes a modified version that's a little bit more subtle and then it's like only taking numbers between 0.2 and 0.8 so it's something like this I think is the equation and of course I screwed up um, and I always forget uh, what is this ah no yes two is too much sorry about that uh, there we go so at least it's a little bit more legible and then you can see the colors if you want to see the color uh, what which one is that so you can use like one of the d3 color um, uh, d3 color legend uh, functions in this case swatches because it's um, it's uh, categorical uh, color legend good so with that and then of course I made a mistake color uh, legends oh there this was just a slow network and then you can see all of the different colors in there there some of them are very close to each other so you can choose other colors like manually uh, but in this case they, they are kind of different so it kind of works so we have that element so what about creating other type of enclosure um, visualizations like like in this case let's say that I'm going to replicate this and then I want to use another layout algorithm in this case I'm going to use the same aggregated data but instead of using this one I think I'm going to be using in here I'm going to be using instead of the tree map I'm going to use tree tree partition and then the tree partition I think it doesn't have um, and this, this is lay uh, partition or icicle actually so I like to call it seems like it's the same one and then uh, I'm going to use uh, laid out tree map data but in this case it's going to be <coughs> icicle data and it's just going to be using my new layout algorithm and passing my tree data aggregated and again it's going to use actually the same format so changing this one it's going to be as easy as just um, changing this one for the laid out icicle data and I don't have an extra one so there we go uh, as you can see we have a problem and it's that it's only blowing the leaves and it's because we did this so um, remember that the icicle has an advantage and it actually shows the values in the inner part and then it has a problem that is not showing me the values for this and that's you can access that here as well in the inner nodes so we actually get these elements as you see in here okay so having done that then you have yet another one in here if you want to see the um, um, vertical one or horizontal I guess will be icicle it's just a matter of switching x and y and that will be it so the other ones you can do is like for instance a radial one or a circle packing let's see if we can get the circle packing working so we are going to duplicate this one and then I'm going to use uh, this one and then I'm going to say uh, here I'm sorry for all the scrolling this one is going to be lay and then um, pack, I guess, that it's like, um, I like to call it like a, 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 a circular trim up. And then in here, we just want to call, we think it's called pack. So pack doesn't have a round attribute. So let's get rid of that. The padding might be there. 
And then if we do the same trick, and then we say this is going to be my layout uh, pack data. Out pack data. It's going to be just my lay pack. Oops, lay pack. And then out of my tree data aggregated. So when I do that, if you check inside, and I'm going, I need to make this out of a copy so I don't see the other attributes. Now we have an X and Y and a radius. So given that, what we can do is that instead of drawing rectangles, we can draw circles. And then this is going to be X and Y. And then you don't have this anymore. But what you do is that you have an attribute uh, radius. And then that is going to be D dot radius. And voila, there you have it. So you still need to work a lot the um, the lab labels, but as you can see, it's it's working quite nicely. So again, you can also do radial. There's also a sunburst version, and it's just a matter of choosing what are the different elements. The key for this, for wrapping up, is that remember, like when you have three data, you have to get the data through this level, and then you just pass that through a layout algorithm. So uh, to summarize, when we started. So you have the data that looks like a tree now in here. And then from that data, you can pass it through an algorithm. In this case, is the D tree, tidy tree. And what that does is that it gives you X and Y's or, 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 or X zeros and Y zeros, or as you just saw, radius and, and certain centers. Okay. So with, with D tree back. But uh, if you want to do that with data that comes from a table like this one, then um, you need to find a way of first passing that and converting them into a tree. So one easy way of doing that it's, uh, that I just learned is doing a D-tree group, in this case a D-tree rollup, you pass how you want to add, and then uh, you pass that to a D-tree D -tree hierarchy. If you have an actual attribute in the middle, then uh, you can use a different aggregation in here. So uh, that's how you create these things. And uh, if you want to go and create something fancier, uh, then you can actually do that using like an input that allows you to choose what are the elements that you're going to be grouping by. And uh, so I'm going to uh, leave you to explore on that. There's, I actually have an input like that in my table to tree notebook. If you want to take a look, uh, just search for that. And I keep on finding the Vegalite uh, notebook in here. It seems my network is not cooperating. Uh, let me give it two seconds. So it's not working in there. I wonder if it will do it in here. Table two, three. Uh, yes, my network is collapsed. So let's wrap it up in there. So I hope uh, this explains how to create these things. And now you can go and create your own tree visualizations.